Welcome to The Tech Show. I'm Sonia Gavankar, and this week, it's time to spring clean those finances. We learn how to take some of those incredible night sky photos with our smartphones, and another gadget tries to take my money. All that and more coming up on The Tech Show. Now it's time for the latest. We all know how annoying group conversations can be when one of the bubbles is green, but it's about to get better. Google's solution to iPhone tapbacks is rolling out to Android phones, and it's very slick. Tapbacks in iMessage are the reactions that appear when you long press on a text. On the iPhone, you can choose one of six reactions and they appear above the message when texting between iPhone users. But when an Android user joins a group conversation, tapbacks become clunky text strings that clutter the conversation with Mike laughed at or Karen loved and then repeats the message. That's gotten a whole lot better now. We were able to test the feature on a Pixel 6 and the implementation is surprisingly solid. Instead of April like this message, when an iPhone user selects a tap back, Android users will see a small emoji under the message rather than above it. But otherwise, the functionality is just like it would be if you were using an iPhone. As a result, iPhone users won't have their conversations cluttered with tap back texts and Android users won't feel like second-class citizens. It's a true win-win and the smartest messaging feature Google's implemented in years. Bueller, Bueller. Have you heard about Bueller yet? The web app that can also be used with the mobile browser on your phone to fake your attendance during Zoom conference calls. It's finally here. And soon, Bueller users won't have to completely miss the meeting that they are supposed to be attending as a transcript will be available to keep the user up to speed. The Bueller roadmap starts with offering transcripts of meetings on top of the recordings adding a searchable dashboard, building a transcript summarization engine, and building a video meeting summarization engine. Solemni says that the point of having Bueller attend a meeting is to give people control of their own time. With Bueller, users make the ultimate decision whether to attend a meeting or do something else if they might consider that more productive and a better use of their time. And the founder states that it is definitely an exciting and challenging road ahead. I gotta look into this more because I feel like I need to save more time. Like 30 seconds, we'll be back. A Vivint smart home system with smart locks, lights, cameras, and more is the smartest way to protect your home and family. But we're not the only ones saying it. U.S. News & World Report named us the top home security system of 2019. Fast Company said we're opening the door to the connected home of the future. TechCrunch even called the Vivint smart home experience magical. Protect your home with the number one smart home service provider in the U.S. Vivint Smart Home. And right now, when you call 800-803-1337, we'll install your whole system for free. As consumers, we rely on digital servers for nearly every part of our lives, from school to work, from services to entertainment. With that, businesses are having to speed up their own digital transformations to stay competitive and to meet the demands of customers. In many cases, it has created complex IT processes that are hard to manage and provides more opportunities for cyber criminals. Today's security company, F5, has announced a new security and delivery platform that aims to address those issues. Joining us now is Haiyan Song, Executive Vice President and General Manager at F5, responsible for the company's security products. Hi, Haiyan. Thank you for having me. Digital services have been on the rise for some time, but during the pandemic really came to the forefront. Has the increased use of digital services made a big difference in how safe it is to operate online? Absolutely. Businesses and individuals now rely on these digital services like never before, from school to work, from doctor to entertainment. The apps that are the center of these services has evolved quickly and become more complex. This increased speed and complexity certainly has become the fertile ground for new cyber crimes. In fact, the FBI the Internet Crime Compliance Center, Complaint Center, reported a 400% increase in cybersecurity complaints since the start of the pandemic. 
So this is why F5 uh, is working to deliver the best and more, most flexible and comprehensive security in the simplest way for, for our customers to consume. So that way we can really help them minimize the real-time impact on the individuals. F5 just announced a new way for companies to manage and secure those vital digital services. How is F5's new distributed cloud platform different than other existing security options and why is it needed? Well, cybersecurity is a topic that actually many people feel is someone else's problem. In reality, it impacts all of us, especially they don't discriminate on which company. It's for large or small and uh, we actually saw stats that uh, recently the cyber crimes that's impacting companies, the 40% of those impact actually, actually are for small and medium companies. And they usually don't have a lot of resources. This is why we took a simpler approach to security so we can help them fight those uh, attacks while they can focus on the business. We hear about breaches and ransomware attacks on large companies, but are cyber criminals going after small and medium enterprises as well? Absolutely. Business and individuals now rely on those digital services like never before. Uh, like you mentioned, you know, from school to work, from doctor to entertainment, you know, for, uh, give us also a way to uh, connect in ways we never were able to do before. The applications, that are the center of this new digital services have evolved quickly and it's becoming more complex. I personally really set up alerts Where for go any for more information? transactions that I'm not present who's using my credit card. So that way I have a way of knowing if this is something that was supposed to happen. Uh, there's even a site uh, that you, you can check whether the business, the companies you do business has been a breach or not. And uh, it has an interesting name called um, haveibeenpwned.com. Uh, so there's a lot of resources. You can uh, do the monitoring to protect your information privacy. Thanks, Haiyan. Thank you for having me here. Have a good day. We have to take a break, but there's more of the tech show right after this. The All of Us Research Program is teaming up with a football legend to promote a unique new research project called the All of Us Research Program. The goal is to create the largest, most diverse health database ever using the information to improve health outcomes for generations to come. And joining us today is former Mexican football superstar and TV analyst Moises Munoz, who is working with all of us to educate the public about this important research program. Hello, Moises. Hello, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Please tell us about the research program. Well, um, this is, uh, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm teaming up with the National Institutes of Health to encourage more people from diverse uh, communities to participate in this All of Us research program. This is um, something that it's, it's aimed, like you said before, to gather up the, the most diverse and biggest database of health information uh, in its kind and that researchers can use this study to, to uh, understand our health and illnesses. Why is it important for people to participate? First of all, I, I'm supporting the All of Us Research Program because it's uh, very important not only to me and my family, but also to my community. Um, in the past, our community was uh, you know, never been uh, added or you know, a part of uh, such programs as this one. And uh, well, this is uh, something that I want to give back uh, to my community. They have helped me throughout my entire career, and this is this is my way to give back. You know, to to um, to try to, to 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 help fans across the United States uh, to to let them know that uh, this is a very important program, and that it can help them and their families not only in the present, but only. Uh, but uh, most of all for future, future generations. Okay, where can we go for more information? Well, you can, you can log into the webpage. It's uh, joinallofus.org slash your health. This is uh, where you can go. You can register there and you're going to have all the information that you need. You can do this and, and it could be as simple or, or as complex as you want it to be. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that you can give the information that you are comfortable with and uh, it's definitely going to help uh, 
uh, a lot of uh, researchers to understand a lot of things that we need about uh, our illnesses and how to prevent them. Thanks so much for sharing. Welcome back. One of the most significant ways we honor people who have made a difference is through statues. This week on the heels of International Day of Women and Girls in Science, that's exactly what Olay, a leader in science and skin care, is doing. Here's the story. Women who work in STEM are behind life-changing scientific breakthroughs, but they often go unrecognized. In fact, only 10% of statues in America feature women. This lack of representation creates a vicious cycle. Women do not feel they belong in STEM careers, reinforcing the gender gap in these fields. Olay, with the help of Harper's Bazaar and Alyssa Carson, are working together to make a change. I've been interested in space since I was little, but people didn't take me seriously. When I was nine, I met a female astronaut. She told me that she also fell in love with space at the age of nine. That's when I knew that if I worked hard, I could make my dream of traveling to Mars a reality. With Olay's help, now I get to help other girls be inspired by a role model of their own. This month, Olay dedicated a statue to Mary Golda Ross. When we think of space, we think of astronauts, but there are lots of other career paths. Without Ross's engineering work, my goal of traveling to Mars would not be possible. Mary Golda Ross, a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, was a brilliant engineer and trailblazer who made lasting contributions to the U.S. aerospace industry. Ross worked on some of the most important technologies of the 20th century, including the Agena rocket behind me. She also contributed to NASA's Interplanetary Flight Handbook, Volume 3, which detailed spacecraft flight paths to Mars and Venus. The first known Native American woman engineer, Ross dedicated herself to encouraging young women and Native students to pursue STEM. With this statue, Ross's legacy will continue to inspire generations of young women. Olay and I are proud to help shed light on her work. Learn more about the Mary Golda Ross statue and how Olay is helping to close the STEM gap by visiting olay.com slash face the STEM gap. There are a lot of confusions about the tax rules the IRS introduced this year, especially with the new laws relating to payments for goods and services through mobile payment apps. Tech life expert Jennifer Jolly is here to help us check it out. Hi, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, that's right. So much confusion around using apps like Venmo or PayPal or online marketplaces like Etsy and Airbnb. Because starting January 1st, 2022, those payment apps and tech tools now have to tell the IRS if you make more than $600 a year for the sale of goods and services. Now, the key here is that last part. This is all about the sale of goods and services. These changes, they don't apply to payments between friends and family, like splitting the cost of a meal, that doesn't count. But if you use payment apps to accept money for your side hustle, uh, for instance, let's say you pay your hairstylist via Venmo for cutting your hair, well, the stylist then has to report that as income. So does that guy who's selling you or reselling concert tickets. Or if you make something at home and you sell it online, candles, jewelry, masks, the IRS wants to do a better job at tracking people's income. And since so many people now use mobile payment apps as a point of sale, that's where they're starting. Now for PayPal and Venmo, at least there is an easy way to tag a payment as goods and services right within the app itself. Also, Payments received by a Venmo business profile, they'll get automatically tagged as goods and services payments anyway. So that helps keep things a little more clear going forward. As always, uh, these apps should send you the required 1099K form at the end of the year. But as always with taxes and the IRS, be sure to check in with your own tax professional to make sure you're doing everything right. To read more about this, you can check my website, techish.com, or just go straight to Venmo or PayPal's websites. Tons of great resources there as well. Thanks, Jen. Did you know that 64% of Americans typically abandon their New Year's resolutions within the first month? So for the many people who had get their finances in order at the top of their list, now is the time to get back on track. Here to help us out is the founder of The Fiscal Femme, Ashley Feinstein Gersley. Thanks for joining us, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. What's your number one tip for our budgets to get them back on track? 
My number one tip is to purge expenses you aren't using or won't miss. To clean up your expenses, you can look at what you've spent so far this year. And are there subscriptions that you're not using or you completely forgot about? Or maybe there's expenses that really aren't adding much joy or happiness to your life. You can let go of those first. We also want to make our finances flexible. Sometimes we need time to pay something off. And I've partnered with a firm and I recommend them because they offer a transparent way to pay over time on your own schedule on everything from last minute travel expenses, home essentials, electronics, even car repair without the hidden fees or compound interest that you might find with credit cards. And if you needed one more reason to put together a budget, a recent Affirm survey showed that consumers are prioritizing finances in their relationship. And the majority, three out of four of them, are saying that financial stability is a turn on. So if you want to find love or rekindle some love, it's you want to get that budget in order. And a great way to do that is to surround yourself by friends, family, and loved ones that will support you in your money goals. If you want to learn more about Affirm, you can head to affirm.com and follow along my budgeting tips at The Fiscal Femme. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Ashley. Our dogs deserve the best treats for being good all year. So this holiday season, don't give them the same old stuff. Give them blue treats, all of them tasty and made with natural ingredients. Let's treat up for the holidays with Blue, available at Walmart. Welcome back to The Tech Show. So you got a shiny new phone that's got a great camera, but have you really played with all of its features? Our friends at The Verge show us how to make the most of our smartphone cameras at night. So as a photographer, I have this long running list of photos that I want to someday take. And one of them looks a lot like this. There's a large sprawling valley and snow covered mountain tops. But of course, the main focus of this photo is the beautiful Milky Way cutting straight through the center of the sky. So I hit up the person who took all of those photos to teach me how they do it. Welcome back to Full Frame Buds. Becca's first astro photo. <laughs> On not just uh, DSLR or mirrorless either. All right, Becca. So really regardless of what you're shooting with, you have to know where to go and when to go to get the perfect shot of the stars. My name's Betty Maya Foote. I am the director of engagement for the International Dark Sky Association and an astrophotographer. Basically, you want to avoid light pollution that can be caused by a number of things. Skyglow is light scattered in the atmosphere from a nearby city or town, obscuring the view of the night sky. Glare is light that's entering your field of view at shallow angles that causes visual discomfort. Light trespass is light from another property trespassing onto your property or into your home. At the International Dark Sky Association, we work to protect the night from artificial light. So a great place to go to start to look for a dark place is our International Dark Sky Places program. But there are a lot of other places around the world that are still great to shoot. One of my favorite maps to look at online is lightpollutionmap.info. So when you found your place to shoot, you're gonna wanna take a look at the moon cycle and figure out where the moon is in its phase before you go out to shoot. If you're looking for that really, really dark sky, you're gonna wanna go before the moon rises or after the moon sets or during a new moon period. Good morning, my name is uh, Val Schwerk and welcome to the San Juan Mountains outside of Ridgeway, Colorado. I'm a retired meteorologist. I used to work for NOAA in Boulder and I'm the local um, dark sky point of contact for Ridgeway, Colorado and Top of the Pines. I'm a little concerned about how cold we're gonna be. Both Val and Betty Maya stress the importance of scouting your location during the day and making sure you will have nighttime access. So our local guide Val led us up to Top of the Pines to get a lay of the land. This is our big break, Val. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a nice open horizon. Yeah. So I'm looking for just something intriguing, like that will draw your eye in to the foreground. And you're also noticing kind of any leading lines or any like color blocks or different parts of the landscape that are gonna draw your eye to a particular part of the photo. 
after a whole bunch of scouting and truthfully getting most things wrong. And the Milky Way comes out of the west this time of year? No, it comes out of the east. It's gonna be probably like right over, over here like this. The brightest part of the Milky Way is gonna be below the horizon, actually. We agreed upon a spot, did our last checks of where the Milky Way and major constellations would be before heading home to prepare our gear. The last thing we had to do before hitting the shutter button on our cameras was focusing. The first step is to set your lens to manual focus, then focus to infinity. Next, bring up the live view and punch in at least 10x magnification in the middle of your screen and find a star. Bring that star in and out of focus until it is the smallest dot of light that you can make it. Then finally, take a photo and don't forget to zoom in and review your focus before you take any more. I spent most of my childhood summers sleeping on the trampoline as a kid, you know, looking up at the night sky. To me, always helped me wonder about the universe as well as just like understand that we're both so small, but also so big and such a part of this infinite universe. We spent close to four hours out shooting that night, and it was incredible to be under something so grandiose in a space so vast and quiet and cold. I was most impressed by the work that the Pixel 6 Pro was doing. The level of detail it was able to capture and instantly process, especially when compared to the iPhone 13 Pro, had me saying, oh, again and again. We have to take one final break, then we're back with Take My Money right here on The Tech Show. Stay with us. and give a preemptive award for best promo video. Check it out. Pretty much a niche product, but they're just so happy about it. So Snap Money, go ahead and take my money. I, you know, great promo, great product, win-win. Thanks for joining us this week. Follow us at the Tech Show TV and join the conversation. Tech you later. <laughs>